Happy Friday, folks. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Here we are, beautiful, beautiful morning. Oh, it's a pretty day. Yes. We're thankful that you're here. We're going to be in Judges chapter 3. Uh, a couple of announcements here on Friday. So we'll have worship service this Sunday at 8 and 10.30 a.m. indoors. You can uh, look it up on uh, details on goodshepherdsc.org. Um, also, very exciting, Children's Church is resuming this Sunday. Mm -hmm. Children's Church is resuming this Sunday at Good Shepherd, so uh, please uh, have, invite neighbors, friends, yeah, kids. it's been too long. It's been a long time. Those little so, ones, yeah. So fourth grade and under was part of our children's church. So we'll have a children's message and then a little time of um, teaching for the children mm -hmm. after that. So we're happy that uh, that's going to be resuming. And then the Sunday after this Sunday, a week from this Sunday, there would be uh, mass will be optional uh, after the mm -hmm. you know so a week from this Sunday. Judges chapter 3, so thank you for joining us on this beautiful Friday as we uh, dig into God's Word together. So let's uh, let's dig in. Judges okay, chapter 3. Okay, got some kind of long names if you want to bear with me here. <laughs> <clears throat> These are the nations the Lord left to test. All those Israelites who had not experienced any of the wars in Canaan. He did this only to teach warfare to the descendants of the Israelites who had not had previous battle experience. The five rulers of the Palestines, all the Canaanites, the Sidonites, the Hevites, living in the Lebanon mountains on the Mount Baal, Hermon, Tolibo, Hamath. They were left to test the Israelites to see whether they would obey the Lord's commands which he had given their forefathers through Moses. The Israelites lived among the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hevites, Jebusites. They took their daughters in marriage and gave their own daughters to their sons and served their gods. Othniel. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Asherahs. The anger of the Lord burned against Israel so that he sold them into the hands of Cushon, Rishhab, Bam, king of Aram, Naharim, to whom the Israelites were subject for eight years. But when they cried out to the Lord, he raised up for them a deliverer, Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, who saved them. The spirit of the Lord came upon him, so that he became Israel's judge and went to war. The Lord gave Cushon Rehathim, king of Aram, into the hands of Othniel, who overpowered him. So the land had peace for 40 years, until Othniel, son of Kenaz, died. Ehud. Once again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and because they did this evil, the Lord gave Eglon, king of Moab, power over Israel. Getting the Amorites and the Amalekites to join him, Eglon came and attacked Israel, and took possession of the city of Psalms. Psalms. The Israelites were subject to Eglon, king of Moab, for 18 years. Again, the Israelites cried out to the Lord, and he gave them a deliverer, Ehud, a left-handed man, the son of Jirah, a Benjaminite. The Israelites sent him with tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Ehud had made a double-edged sword about a foot and a half long, which he strapped to his right thigh under his clothing. He presented the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab, who was, very, who was a very fat man. After Ehud had presented the tribute, he sent on their way the men who had carried it. At the idols near Gilgal, he turned himself back and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. The king said, quiet, and all his attendants left him. Ehud then approached him while he was sitting alone in the upper room of his summer palace and said, I have a message from God for you. As the king rose from his seat, Ehud reached with his left hand, drew the sword from his right thigh, and plunged it into the king's belly. Even the handle sank in after the blade, which came out his back. Ehud did not pull the sword out, and the fat closed in over it. Then Ehud went out to the porch. He shut the doors of the upper room behind him and locked them. After he had gone, the servants came and found the doors of the upper room locked. They said he must be relieving himself in the inner room of the house. They waited to the point of embarrassment. 
But when he did not open the doors of the room, they took a key and unlocked them. There they saw the Lord fallen to the floor dead. Why they waited, he who had got away. He passed by the idols and escaped to Sarah. When he arrived there, he blew a trumpet in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites went down with him from the hills, with him leading them. Follow me, he ordered, for the Lord has given Moab your enemy into your hand. So they followed him down, and taking possession of the fords of the Jordan that led to Moab, they allowed no one to cross over. At that time they struck down 10,000 Moabites, all vigorous and strong, not a man escaped. That day Moab was made subject to Israel, and the land had peace for 80 years. Shamgar. After Ehud came Shamgar, son of Anath, who struck down 600 Philistines with an ox goad, he too saved Israel. All right, let's uh, dig into this. Let's pray. Lord of grace and mercy, thank you so much for um, this time together and the love that you have for us. Teach us from your word now, even in the difficult things that are occurring uh, in, in the text that we have here. We pray, Lord God, that our hearts and minds be open to you and to you alone in the midst of all this. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so, again, this is a rehashing uh, of what went wrong uh, leading up to finally the uh, getting into some of the judges. And this was, part of this is the prologue, and now we're kind of re uh, going into the time of, of some of the judges. And, and the way the organ this is organized, there's some um, like individual uh, accounts of people acting by themselves and some who are rallying the rest of the Israelites. So it looks like Ehud had uh, you know kind of come up with a plan on his own pretty much and then rallied people after that. So let's uh, one of the things that really stuck out at me in the first six verses is, and I think this is the key uh, to what went wrong. They took their daughters in marriage mm -hmm. and gave their own daughters to their sons and served their gods. Mm -hmm. So they did exactly what the Lord told them not to do, right? The people were supposed to be driven out from their places, and instead of doing that, they start intermingling with them, they intermarry with them, they start serving their gods. And so this is what's going on. So the repeated theme you will see over and over again, and you see it in these uh, the account of each of these, um, the Israelites, verse 7, did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. They forgot the Lord their God. That, that was basically, that's the recurring theme that you will see throughout the book, book of Judges. They forgot God, they went on their own way, and they served the gods of the people around them. That's, that's basically the, the summation. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, like from a general point of view or any, anything else, that, like what are some things well, that jumped out of Well, I like that you? the first judge, now is this in order, so Othniel was the first one, you think? Well, um, it seems like he might have been because he's Caleb's younger yeah, brother. Yeah, that's what I like about it. Yeah. You know, so you have Joshua and then you have Caleb and then yeah. you have, you know, Othniel. So I like that part of it. Um, and when they're ruling, they have peace. 40 years or many years as yeah. long as the judge rules and then so, so it's kind of like a, a, a you see this recurring pattern uh, apostasy like rebellion against God uh, you know what what they were subject to the people cry out God is merciful that gives raises up a judge and then they have peace for a period of time usually like a generation in one case though it's 80 years mm -hmm. uh, year. but usually like a generation or so and then they forget about that. They go off and do, do their own thing again. Mm -hmm. And then, if we're, are we ready to go into Ehud? Sure. So, okay, he's left-handed. I kind of find it ironic that in my notes it says Benjaminite means son of my right hand. I think that's kind of, <laughs> yeah. kind of, you know, I think it's God's way to be like, I'm going to throw one in there or something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Mix it up a little bit. But anyway, brave man felt like he had a duty to um, serve, and he did, I think. Yeah, it's kind of a gruesome 
Well, yeah, and it couldn't have been. I mean, we can read this passage again. We've said we've said this before. You read it, you think, what's that like going into to see the king? Number one, number two, you know you have a weapon, and you're hoping they don't discover it. Right. So you know, lots going on there. Um, so, you know, when it says it's strapped it to his thigh, it might have been uh, somewhere hidden in the inner thigh. And also a place where the people obviously didn't search him that well to go in. Uh, Maybe they searched the left leg because yeah, you know, no, you know, normally you're gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna take a weapon that way. So anyway, they they neglected in their duty to in in the searching of him. And the thing is, um, this is the king of Moab. The Moabites had been defeated be before, but now they rise up uh, again. And Moab is to the east of the Jordan River to the east of the Dead Sea, where the plateau would be um, modern-day Jordan, the modern-day uh, nation of Jordan. And uh, so they, they rise up, and the king um, subjects part of Israel. I'm not sure if it's the whole of Israel. So sometimes when you talk about the Israelites, uh, it's using a collective, but he might not have been controlling all of the territory. Some of it's controlled including where Benjamin is, um, controlled by this king, and they had to pay tribute. That's it was a common thing. It's like if you were subjected to someone else, you essentially had to pay a big tax um, to the people. Like the, for the Romans, you had to collect, you know, they had to collect taxes mm -hmm. for the Romans. Um, tribute was, was set by the ruling power by uh, whatever they had to bring, which might have been a bunch of food supplies like wheat and other things, uh, but also silver and gold you know, they have to bring. So he he brings his tribute, and it says he, he returns to the past the idols that are near Gilgal. Those idols were most likely stone replicas of the king, uh, of, of uh, the king of the Moabites, uh, in which he would mark his boundaries. Like this is my territory. This is my territory. It's, uh, so setting himself up uh, and marking his, the. So he turns back then at that point and he comes back. Yeah, I got a secret message for you. And the king's all excited. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, this. And um, then he plunges the, the sword and comes out his back. And gruesomely, the fat swallows. You know, kind of closes in mm -hmm. around the sword. Yeah. Kind of a uh, kind of a gruesome kind yeah. of thing. And but there's almost like a little humor in here. It's like. Um, he locks the door, goes out the porch way, and then the people, his attendants are like, what's going on? Mm. Is he going to the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> what's happening? And then they finally open the door and they find that he's yeah. dead, but meanwhile, um, Ehud had gotten away. <laughs> he, he, had, he had escaped. I just find it kind of, you know, talk, going back to the idols, talking mm. about idols, stone idols, and we've talked about this before, but, you know, we can say we would never put a stone idol up, but we have different ways of idol worship today. Yeah. Oh, so, they don't have to be a statue. We were somewhere recently where it was a beautiful place, but there was no cross, and but there were Buddha statues. Yeah. We're like, <laughs> what? what is this? Yeah. I didn't like it. And there was the, uh, what is it, the Hindu god Shiva. That was there too, remember the, the uh, Oh the yeah. Eastern, yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but there was no cross. Anywhere, mm -hmm. and even then, it's like you know, who cares? It's like uh, if you would have had the cross, there would have been like, what is this? Just uh, every religion right. is the same. There's right. just a pantheon of gods. There's right. all paths. But you know, everybody's leads to the same thing. I remember having a conversation? It was somebody I was having a conversation with, and uh, they're like, well, you know, I believe, you know. Uh, Everybody's talking about the same God. They just give different names. It's all, all these paths lead, and I, and I was just like, mm -hmm. no, that's not uh, yeah. that, that's not the God of the Scriptures. And I don't know if this is an accurate statement, but pride is a big factor, don't you think, in, in leading in somebody's hesitation to the gospel? I, mean, uh, yeah. I had a conversation with somebody recently, and I asked them what they would do, how they would think they would get into heaven and they said by my mind that yeah. God that the creator created. Yeah. 
like I, I'd, uh, my intelligence would get me into heaven. In there. Yep. So, so they, these are all things we can fall anyway, in many different ways. I mean, nobody's ways. better than anyone else. Right. You know, we're all sinners. We're all weak in <coughs> parts. We all struggle with things. So, um, I'm not trying to make out that I'm better than anybody yeah. if at all. I definitely have my moments. Yeah. You know very well, don't you? Well, we all, <laughs> you know, for me, but there, there's, we all need the grace and forgiveness that's found in Jesus. Uh, we all are subject to uh, creating idols. Uh, as someone once said, we're, our hearts are idol-producing factories. And we can make an idol out of pretty much anything. So we need to check ourselves and, and um, look to the Lord. Here's, here's an example on a national level of a nation continually turning from the Lord, even though he did so many things for them, continually turn from the Lord and go and pursue their own ways. And then when they're in trouble, they cry out. Now, I know a lot of people uh, who kind of act that way as well. It's like, oh, everything's going great in their life. They don't have any time for God. They don't have any time for anything else. Then something bad comes along in their life. God, you need to be here for me now. Why do you, why'd you let this happen to me? Um, and it's just, I mean, the way we treat God is it's like you're our, you are my personal servant mm -hmm. and you're supposed to be at my beck and call when uh, things don't go well and hey why are you letting this happen to me mm -hmm. but when things are going great you know I pretty much have done it myself mm -hmm. so that, that's, that's a, this human nature of us in rebellion against the Lord so check ourselves we need to we need to look to the Lord for wisdom and guidance and strength and just want to remind you again on uh, this Sunday, 8 and 10, 30 a.m., and Children's Church, I'm excited, yeah. Children's Church is resuming wonderful. this Sunday. All right, let's pray. All right. Thank you, Father, for a beautiful day you've blessed us with, for your grace and mercy in our life. Fill us with your spirit now, Lord God. Help us to see the world through the eyes of Jesus in the midst of the political chaos, in the midst of the racial chaos, in the midst of all of these things that are occurring, the pandemic chaos. We are thankful that we're anchored to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our, our faith. Fill us with your spirit now, Lord God, and lead us, Lord God, to bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God Have a great you. day, everybody. Yeah.